toilets are so ordinary that people might ignore how important they are and what the cost of poor sanitation is in terms of health and economics. Today, China View has the lowdown on toilets as introduced you to an entirely new WTO. Almost everyone knows what WTO means, or do they? Besides the World Trade Organization, there's another WTO, the World Toilet Organization. Although the name World Toilet Organization may evoke embarrassed laughter or ridicule, in fact, the global non-profit organization has a very serious purpose. The 10-year-old organization is dedicated to improving toilets and sanitation worldwide, and has already made important contributions to the construction of world sanitation systems. This other WTO was founded in Singapore by Jack Sim, who wanted to do something important with his life. I started business when I was 24. Business was very good. I made a lot of money. But when I reached 40, I start to think, how long does a person live? And the answer is, most people die around 80. So I have already spent half of my life earning money. What is the purpose to earn some more money? I start looking for what is meaningful to use this remaining time and I found that the toilet was neglected and so I focused my life on this. So I have to very urgently spend this time to do social work that gives meaning back to society rather than to exchange my time for money which I don't need anymore. Sim purposefully gave his organization the same acronym as the more famous World Trade Organization to bring attention to sanitation issues. In the beginning, when uh, the world does not want to talk about toilets, toilets is a very embarrassing subject in most culture, and people find it very uncomfortable to talk about toilets. So when I started, I played the pun of the World Trade Organization by call ourselves, calling ourselves the WTO. And the media loves it, and when they start reporting it, it sounds very funny, um, sounds like the World Trade Organization and the subject turns from something very embarrassing to something very humorous and yet we are able to tell serious facts about toilets. People were all wanting to talk about toilet, but they are embarrassed and they didn't have permission. Now with the legitimacy by the media, then everybody uh, feel it's okay to talk about it now. So ever since 2001 until now 10 years, we have been very successfully opening up the subject. Mr. Sim wants more people to pay attention to toilets because the world's sanitation problems are so great. For example, in 2001, 2.4 billion people, or 40% of the world's population, didn't have proper sanitation. Today, it's 2.6 billion people. So instead of the number going down, it's gone up. This shows that the subject itself has not uh, been addressed sufficiently. The population growth has grown so much faster over the years and the number of toilets supplied and provided has actually not caught up with the population increase. Sim's travels around the world have helped him realize how serious sanitation problems are. The worst situation are many. Um, very often you have no proper sanitation and it is open defecation. Mm -hmm. And what I have seen that is very scary is in, uh, in Nairobi where they, tr they poop into plastic bag and they throw it everywhere on the street and the children are playing barefoot on the street and they are walking and the feces and touching it and rubbing their eyes and touching their mouth and these children have high risk of dying. Every year, 1.5 million children die of diarrhea alone, more than the number who die of AIDS and measles altogether. Many of these cases of diarrhea are the result of poor sanitation. Trevor Moulodza is the managing director of The Clean Shop. 
He once wrote a book called The African Toilet and Sanitation Dialogue. He will host the next World Toilet Summit, which will be held in Durban, South Africa. I've been a member since year 2004 because we all need a toilet every day, including presidents. Even the poor people have to go to the toilet. Even the middle class have to go to the toilet. So we can't run away from the toilet. We have to talk about it. The biggest problem in Africa is that we don't take toilets seriously. We are still shitting in the bush in many countries. So I'm saying, no, 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 we have to do it differently. But the problem is not just restricted to Africa. And uh, the level of sanitation in India is um, between uh, 50 to 60 percent. So lots of people do not have the toilets. And uh, same case is with China and many other developing uh, countries. Bad sanitation conditions not only make people uncomfortable, but cause big economic losses and create hidden threats to people's health. According to Katerina Alberkachu, a special reporter on the human right to safe drinking water and sanitation, lack of sanitation causes millions of lost school and work days, as well as enormous health costs. Alberkachu has called on states to devote more resources to sanitation, to target existing resources more effectively, and to begin treating adequate access to toilets as a human right with serious implications for the employment of other fundamental rights. Especially in the developing world, toilets can be a matter of life or death. Lack of sanitation is a major factor in the spread of infectious diseases and in child mortality rates. The fly can give birth to lots of other babies very rapidly. The flies goes to the poop and goes to the food of the children and their legs transfer the pathogens, viruses and diseases and spread so fast. We don't see 100 tigers uh, eating how many children have. I rarely see that uh, People say tigers are very dangerous. I think the human beings are more dangerous than tigers. So when we put that comparison, it is true that the flies are killing the children much more than the tigers. Sim, who prefers to be called the toilet man, describes the toilet as the cheapest preventive medicine in the world. Research shows that for every U.S. dollar spent on sanitation, there's a return of nine U.S. dollars in costs averted and productivity gained. When people have proper sanitation and hygiene, they can work, and healthy people have a better chance of getting out of poverty. However, one of the first steps people must take to solve sanitation problems, according to Sim, is to be willing to talk about toilets without embarrassment. Everybody uh, wants to be having a very wholesome image in front of other people. They pretend that they have never fought in their life and they feel very guilty that they produce a pungent smell in the toilet. So they never dare to admit that this is actually a normal thing. But now it's just like before when people cannot talk about leprosy, they cannot talk about sex. Today they cannot talk about toilets. But all this taboo can be broken. Improving toilet and sanitation conditions around the world is a huge project, which needs both people's awareness and professional policies and scientific measures. The World Toilet Organization has established November 19th as World Toilet Day. The annual World Toilet Summit also provides a platform for individuals from health organizations, business and academia to exchange ideas about efforts to improve toilet and sanitation conditions around the world and provide adequate facilities for the 260 million people without toilet access. Oh, well, the significance of the summit is, is a way to bring focus on toilets and sanitation. So often we hear governments talking about water. To improve unsatisfactory sanitation conditions around the world, the World Toilet Organization has adopted a number of related policies in the past 11 years. These include changing the law to increase the number of women's public toilets, training the poor to become entrepreneurs, manufacturing toilets in small factories, and then selling them to the local poor at affordable prices, and conducting training courses 
to ensure good practice and high standards in toilet design, cleanliness and sanitation technology. Find out more about these policies in the next program.